taking a look today at a classic Linux distribution. This time, Red Hat 6.2, not Red Hat Enterprise 6, Red Hat 6.2. So this is from oh, the 90s. Uh, and instead of just doing it in a dull PC setting, let's run an emulated Spark using QMU. Um, one thing I did before this was to grab a copy of the Red Hat ISO. Um, I wish I could have found a Red Hat version 5 ISO because I actually used that in the 90s on my Spark Station. Um, but I found 6.2, uh, Spark Station 5 uh, ROM, and the CG3, Color Graphics 3 uh, ROM as well. This will let us run in 1152 by 900 mode. Um, the stock ROMs will, will do 1024 by 768 only. So let's uh, create an image. Uh, do a QET format. Um, okay, pretty easy. Now let's uh, fire up the QMU system. So give it the Spark Station uh, BIOS. Tell it to use the CG3 video adapter. My Spark Station, well, a variety of Spark Stations over the years, but one of them did have a built-in CG3, if I remember. I think that was the IPX. Um, CG3. Let's do 1152. My 900 mode, graphics mode. And we'll want our drive to be... And let's put our CD-ROM on there, too. And let's hope this works. So the wonderful, wonderful Open Boot Prom uh, 2 series from Spark Stations, there's nothing better. This really shows how to do a boot ROM. Um, why EFI or UEFI could not be this good, I don't know, but gives you positive confirmation of memory checks, shows what's on your um, on your expansion buses or any processors if you have something with MBUS. But here it shows the S bus and an MBUS, great systems. So the silo prompt, uh, the spark loader. So another Red Hat, classic Red Hat. Um, it gives you some useful information here and auto boots um, I probably should have selected the text mode installer but I didn't so we'll have to run through this in graphical mode so hopefully hopefully it'll work um, one of the nice things about uh, Sparks is they had consistent uh, consistent graphics devices so pretty easy to write a write an X driver for it so classic logo I recall I think I actually for my my spark IPC I think I actually had to to create a uh, a working boot desk for Red Hat for the floppy um, I think I actually did my first spark install off of floppy you could imagine that. Uh, you know, I had no network at the point. I think it was at boarding school. Didn't have any. Didn't have any Ethernet, and that was my only machine. So we'll accept that it's a Type Five keyboard, and continue. Yeah, we don't want GNOME. We want classic KDE. Was this KDE two? Uh, yeah, we'll take DHCP because we're going to use the internal QMU networking. Yeah, Eastern Time will be fine for this. Let's pay a demo account. And 
So this is a pretty simple graphical installer. They've gotten a lot more complicated. Steps are the same. I really should have selected the text mode installer, uh, but it timed out a little too quickly for me. So this is back when you could get, I don't know, do any Linux still support Spark? That's an interesting question. Maybe, uh, maybe Debian. Um, yeah, no, I don't want graphical login. Uh, maybe Debian supports it. Maybe things like Gen 2. Uh, probably just Ultra Spark, right? So 32-bit Spark support's probably disappeared. Again, I don't know who'd really be running 32-bit Spark anymore. I mean, I wish I still had my, my Spark 20. It was a wonderful, wonderful setup on that Spark 20 with the, the dual HyperSpark uh, MBUS card. Uh, but I know the, the BSDs, at least NetBSD and OpenBSD, should support uh, the Spark line. Which is nice if you have something old you want to you wanna run, it. or if you have your old Solaris. I think up through 8, you can still do the 32-bit Spark uh, stuff. So, one of the reasons I got into Linux for the Spark was... Uh, my first Spark was really, really um, underpowered. It was an IPC with, I think, 8 or 16 megs of memory. So really wimpy. And this was what, 95, maybe 96, 94? Somewhere in that time frame. And I could have done Sun OS 4, but that was pretty outdated at that point. So it was... Uh, the option was to use uh, Linux, and Red Hat was in some ways the, the best out there for it. Again, I never messed around with the Debian stuff too much. Uh, maybe it might be a might be a good thing to play around with with uh, Debian make a video because it'll be kind of first impressions for me I've used some Debian based stuff like Ubuntu unfortunately just because I had to um, but I've never actually played around with the core Debian stuff so that might be fun to get get my first impressions on it um, so this will probably churn for a minute or two um, I don't have any good idea of how this compares to an actual spark uh, what the performance is here on on the emulated uh, Spark here. Surely the I.O. system's faster, but uh, no way to know. Um, the other thing I, I haven't checked with QMU in, in a little bit of time is whether the uh, the multiprocessing support is there for Spark. Um, I know you can get it to boot a uh, Spark 20 if you tweak some parameters and have the Spark 20 uh, ROM image, um, which is uh, which is useful. Um, get a Spark 20. I don't know how that'll that'll impact performance in any way. Obviously, this is similar. Look at that Perl 5.00. So this really is an antique. But hopefully we get to see some uh, some classic Linux at the state of the the late '90s, I guess. Um, maybe early two now. Can't be early two thousand for this. So again, a little bit of an overblown installer here, um, but it's still a lot more lightweight than what we currently have. Can I get to anything else here now? Um, so this is going to take a minute. I'm going to pause the video right now so we don't have to sit around and wait for this to spend its 10 minutes installing. And I'll go grab a beverage and I'll be back in a couple minutes. Whistle wetted and packages finished installing. Uh, let's see what's next. Let's uh, skip creating the boot disk. Got to check that. This is getting pretty exciting. See what happens. I uh, probably could have configured this with a lot less memory. I know the this would run on a much uh, much lighter weight system. So, 128 megs. You have to remember, so think like 1997. 128 megs was a good amount of RAM. Here we get our 
silo silo boot image. Uh, one gripe I had with with all the kind of Spark Linuses is instead of using the very very nice Sun frame buffer, they said, "Oh, let's use the this different frame buffer." I guess you get more text on the screen, but you're at a spark station are you going to be using text mode all that much i don't know i kind of like the white on black and the sun font it uh it works for me maybe it's because those were the among the first high-end workstations i worked on were, were spark stations um you know the other ones were sgis and they always looked a little bit goofy um you know dur during boot but they also had a gorgeous desktop i wish i had one um log in here and see what uh, X desktop we got so not the speediest thing but again compare this to when it was I don't know what sort of uh, what sort of performance we're getting out of here and this is a full Full KDE desktop here. Okay, let's give it our root password. Let's bring up console with a K. So, this is some classic, classic KDE. Roll away there. So let's see what do we have do we have emacs here in the default install looks like we do so the new emacs uh basic x menus very nice um, take a look i guess we have a fujitsu long string of letters and numbers cpu means nothing to me uh, uh, pretty nifty so this is this is kind of what uh, what Linux on a spark was in the late 90s let's see uh, just for fun this this won't go too well uh, using a late 90s era browser um, to hit something useful um, HTTP wise See if we can if we can bring up a bring up a website. Nothing will be rendered correctly because um, this is an ancient browser. See my habits of, of putting something in the uh, in the search bar. Let's see if Amiga kit. Maybe they're. Whew. Yes, that's. Uh... I think maybe some Amiga related stuff will be not using CSS because, well, I don't know if any Amiga browsers. Maybe they have ones now. Maybe for something like Morph OS, things like that. Wow, that's a pretty busy page. But. Uh... This is functional, but barely. Um, I guess the the moral here is if you have a real Spark station, you probably shouldn't be running a 90s era Linux distro on it. But this was all just for a little bit of fun, um, to uh, just to poke around and play with it. Let's see what GCC we get. Not even GCC three. Um, so, what VI Vim? Again, wonderful thing that Slackware does is defaults the VI to LDIS. A little bit lighter weight, you know, not a huge difference. Vim has its place certainly. It's just, you know, 
standard VI should be either stock Unix EVI, BSD VI, or if you don't have those options, yeah, use Elvis. Um, something a little light weight, lighter weight. So I can't think of too much else to uh, to poke around and look at here. Um, again, it is just a little bit of a blast from the past. Uh, you know, nothing useful there, but in the multi you know, CD player, who uses that anymore? Karaoke player. Um, so pretty interesting set of stuff they decided to throw on there. Um, you know, the K floppy controller. Oh, you get a hex editor. Not bad. Classic KDE. Also not a bad desktop. Um, I think KDE is, you know, KDE is fancy these days. So the KDE 4 stuff, it's it's beautiful. I, no one will argue with its beauty, but it's, it's a bit heavyweight. So I guess this wraps up this video. Uh, I'm probably going to do some more stuff with QMU uh, for the Spark. Um, maybe take a look at old classic SunOS 4. Um, maybe uh, some more modern Solaris, maybe a 7 or an 8 on Spark. Um, I don't know how well that'll work, um, but that may be a practical application of the QMU uh, Spark emulator is to say, oh, you have some 32-bit Solaris apps. Eh, maybe, but if they're your apps, maybe rebuild them and target and open Solaris um, if you need something like that, because you can get open Solaris on the Spark modern, and Solaris is nice about giving you 32-bit um, uh, build environment uh, to maintain their nice backward compatibility. Um, but, you know, leave a comment if you want to see something interesting here. This was just kind of a little little nostalgia experiment uh, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, thanks. Until next time.